All right, it's a little warm in here, so we're pretending it's like camp meeting. So we do have fans available. We found out this morning about 7.30 that our big units had a problem. And we do have a repair going on right now during this worship service, they're in the basement. But they were trying to get it repaired as we speak. I can't promise, but we pray that they will. Um, so everyone who's got a fan, you is, we all know how good fans are for camp meetings. And if you've never been to a tent revival, I know I'm telling my age, I have. These were crucial for all tent revivals in any, any type of revival. So I'm Cleo McQueen. I'm the associate pastor here. Claire is out of town. She's finishing up her vacation today. She'll be back next week. So don't forget to pray for Claire for safe travels home. I'm sure she had a wonderful, wonderful week. I miss her terribly when she's gone, but she will be back next week. So we have a treat today. We have the Reverend Nanandria Sims with us today. Uh, she's a, good, a friend of mine. We serve together as pastors. She also she serves as associate pastors at St. Paul and Mount Pleasant, two of my favorite churches. I love Mount Pleasant. I have good friends that go attend there. So thank you, DeAndre, <clears throat> excuse me, DeAndrea, for delivering our sermon today. It's going to be very inspirational, I know. We've got a couple of things to announce. You see our prayer list in the bulletin. Again, as we always pray, please uh, keep Bob Peterson and Darlene in your prayers as they're going through this journey. And I forgot, do not, not only is an interesting, DeAndre is married to another pastor, the Reverend Cordell Sims. And she has two children, KJ and Colby. So she stays busy. You can read more about her and her ministry in the bulletin. That is a beautiful picture, too. We've got just a few announcements, as we always have. I'm going to ask Jill Sin, Director of Children and Family Ministries, to come up and tell you a little bit about something very exciting that's happening at the end of this month. Good morning. Um, I just wanted to talk to you just really quickly um, about uh, Wesley on Wheels. Um, it is a camp that is from Camp Wesley Pines. It's a traveling camp. And we've had um, them here. We've had Camp Lake Stevens come, um, but we haven't had anything for the past three years. And so we're really excited that we get to have this um, group come and um, host camp here. Um, we have um, the ability to take 32 kids. We have about 15 right now. So if anyone knows children between the age um, that are in kindergarten through fifth grade, um, let me know and um, we can get them signed up. There are um, some children from our partner school, West Elementary, and um, then we have several kids from our own church here, and then we have some kids from the community. So it, it's a, a big, dis different bunch of, of children. Um, the thing that I'm asking you for is if you would like to sponsor any of these kids. We don't want any of them to not be able to come because they can't afford it. Um, so the cost is $150 um, for the week. It's four full days of camp and a half day on Friday. Um, it's with camp counselors from Camp uh, Wesley Pines. It's going to be a great experience, and we don't want anyone to be left out. So if you would um, consider giving um, either a full scholarship to one of the students or even a partial scholarship, we would very much appreciate that. So thank you so much for your consideration. Thank you, Jill. Uh, my grandson's going to be attending this camp at the end of the summer, so you'll get to see the little redheaded fella at this camp, and he keeps us hopping. A couple more things I want to talk about. On um, Wednesday, we will have um, Pipes and Keys with Jeannie Pollard, our gifted organist. And then uh, Friends of Mary will be meeting Tuesday, uh, June the 14th at 9.30 in the library in the Fellowship Hall. Saturday, we're going to remember a remarkable person. We are going to celebrate the life of Mo Michelli. If you've not been, if you did not know Mo, he was a true blessing to us all. 
He, was, he made me laugh. He made us smile. He gave such joy to all of us, so we hope you join us on Saturday celebrating his life. Another thing we're going to have, which is really neat to, uh, to come to, Wednesday on June the 15th at 8.30 in the morning, we are going to talk about Mission Mississippi. Nettie Winters, who is the president of Miss Mission Mississippi, will be here to talk about that. We hope everyone can come. Breakfast will be included, and it is in the fellowship hall. So hope to see everyone there, too. Of course, our summer outreach is going to be uh, toothpaste, bug spray, sunscreen, anything that we can give to us, Gulf Coast Community Ministries. They really need sunscreen and insect repellent for people who, don't, who are homeless. We have one more announcement, and this is an extra fun announcement. It's for Bethel Free Clinic, and Kay Capel is going to come tell you about this concert that they will be, we will be hosting here in July. Good morning. Um, I serve on the board of directors at the Bethel Free Clinic, and you may have noticed the name Bethel Clinic in this week's bulletin under the list of ministry partnerships. Some of you know about Bethel. Some of you have served on the board of directors yourself or have volunteered at the clinic. And there's a handful of us who are still very involved with the clinic at this time. Um, and I'm here to offer an invitation about this concert, but before I do, I want to tell you a little bit more about the clinic for those who don't know, want you to know who we are and where we are. The Bethel Clinic is a small nonprofit medical clinic, which as the name states, is free. Our mission is to provide primary medical care to adults in the Mississippi Gulf Coast community who have no health insurance. Bethel Clinic was founded in 2005 in the aftermath of Hurricane Katrina, and due to the storm, a lot of physicians' offices were damaged, and physicians and their staff members also had damage to their homes and had to relocate. Volunteers were coming to the coast, and they had medications and medical supplies, but in many cases had no really good outlet to distribute them. And residents and volunteers were, of course, still in need of medical treatment. So there were some medical professionals who were among a group of out-of-state volunteers who came and were volunteering out of the Bethel Lutheran Church in Biloxi. And they started just seeing people as they needed to be treated. Um, and initially, they worked out of the church. And um, soon, they, the, the staff at the church and some of the other volunteers started recruiting local people to, who, who could organize more formally a, a clinic that would last. They moved into a space that was provided by the Biloxi Housing Authority and soon after moved into a little bit bigger space and that's the clinic that we occupy now. <clears throat> the clinic is located in Biloxi off of Iberville Drive and we lease our building thankfully from the Biloxi Housing Authority for a dollar a year. Although many years have passed since the clinic was founded, the need for free medical care remains a reality in our community. Bethel Clinic operates much like a primary care physician's office where we treat patients with diabetes, hypertension, pulmonary disease, and other common conditions. The clinic is currently open on Tuesdays and Thursdays on a first come first serve basis and at no charge to the people that we serve. Bethel Clinic has a dedicated all-volunteer staff of clinical and clerical workers, and they give graciously of their time and their expertise for the benefit of those who are uninsured. We currently are especially in need of nurses and clerical help, so if you would like to volunteer or know anybody who might fill those positions, please let me know about it. And while professional services and some supplies are donated, financial support is needed for medications, for lab work, and other operational expenses. We're dependent on the generosity of individuals. Some churches support us financially, and other groups provide funds that we need to care for our patients. And we also hold fundraisers, which leads me to that invitation. Um, of course, recently you may have read about, heard about the golf tournament that we held, and some of you did participate in that. We thank you for that.
but not everybody plays golf, but everybody can attend a concert. So Bethel is hosting a benefit concert on the evening of July 9th here in our sanctuary, and everyone is invited. Um, among lo <coughs> local coast performers will be our very own James Taylor and Shannon Williford. But James really has put together this concert for me. I, the idea came to me, I went to him, and he has lined up an amazing uh, cast of talent for the evening. Tickets are on sale now, and the suggested donation price is $15 a person. And since we expect go guests from across the host, I want us to be gracious host and show up and fill the pews. Well, not all the pews, because we want guests to come. But um, I want you please to participate by purchasing tickets, showing up for the performers, and also spread the word to people that you know. So like I said, if you want to know more about the clinic, if you want to know more about volunteer opportunities, I'll be happy to talk with you. And I will have tickets available after the service. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Kay. I hope everyone can attend that. I plan on being here. It's going to be a good evening of music. Thank you, James. <clears throat> and our worship now begins. Let me make a quick announcement. Um, we've had some technical difficulty, so you will not see the lyrics to the hymns or the songs on the screen. So our closing hymn, our closing song, Goodness of God, you know. The opening one you may not know, so James is going to perform that for you. Um, the middle song, um, Come Thou Fount, you know. And it's also in the hymn books in the pews. So I'll, I'll announce that when it's the proper time. So good morning, everyone. Grace and peace be with you and also with you. We gather in the name of the living Christ to worship God. Surely God is in this place and calls us to worship in spirit and in truth. God's love for you and for all people is everywhere. May we be renewed in the refreshing spirit of the living Christ that we may share God's love and life. The living Christ is with us. Praise the Lord. Let us pray. God of grace and glory, may your presence known to us as we worship. Jesus, our Christ, may your name always be known. Spirit of holiness, breathe on us all and bind us in Christian love. O oh God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be among us. Transform our lives and our community into the image of Jesus Christ. Amen. Cross, and he rose up from that grave 
Thank you, James. It's beautiful as always. Well, we've come to a time of our service where it's time for us to give back our gifts that we have been so graciously given by our Lord. But before I tell, tell, excuse me, tell you about that, we have little hay cards that are in each of our bulletins. If you just take a moment to fill these out, we'd appreciate it. And if you are a new person that's not been here before, welcome. Thank you for being here. And of course, Claire and myself would like to know a little bit about you and possibly contact you sometimes during this week. If you have any prayer concerns, please let us know so we can pray for you. There are many ways to give. And I believe there is a slide right up there that tells us all the good ways that you can give back to our church. And we appreciate your gifts that you return to us. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, thank you for all the gifts that are given to us. And thank you for this time that we may return these gifts to others and be able to bless others with those gifts. Thank you for this church community and our church family. Thank you for the community in which we live. And may we be a blessing to others with our gifts. In Jesus' name, amen.
please remain standing and join me as we affirm our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father and Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and a life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning, church. Do you remember last week was the Feast of Pentecost, right? The birthday of the church. And Claire talked to us about pneuma, which is the breath of the Spirit. Remember, she told us the word ruach, which has to do with the wind of the Holy Spirit. And we prayed for the presence of the Holy Spirit well, let's imagine that these fans are the Holy Spirit's breath blowing over us this morning, okay? Um, so please join me in prayer. God of creation, we thank you for this beautiful day, for the heat and the rain and the colors of summer and the blessing of your beauty all around us. Lord, we pray for peace in this world. It's, everything seems to be crazy and mixed up. We pray that you will guide the people of this land and of all the nations, especially, Lord, we remember the conflict in the Ukraine. Guide us all in the ways of justice and peace that we may honor one another and in so doing, honor you and bring you glory. We pray for our church, Lord. We pray for Claire and for Cleo. We pray for Reverend Sims this morning as she brings us a message from you. We pray for all the staff of our church and the leadership, both paid and volunteer, and we pray, Lord, for our Methodist church at large. Lord, we ask that you bless all those whose lives are closely linked with ours. Grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another. Especially we pray for the ministries of this church, Lord, that you will spark in the hearts some volunteers to help support these ministries, especially West Elementary. We pray for the students and the staff. We pray for our Children First Learning Center, the children and the staff, for the elders and staff of Seashore Highlands, for our Home Under the Dome ministry. Lord, grant us wisdom as plans are made to provide a meaningful outing for our friends and helpful respite for the caregivers. We pray also for the Bethel Free Clinic, Lord, for the volunteers and the patients that both physical as well as spiritual needs may be met. Father, we pray for the poor, the hungry, the oppressed, those in prison, and for those in any kind of trouble, give them your comfort and give strength to those who care for them. We lift up all those on our prayer list and also those whose needs are known to you alone. Grant them an extra measure of your grace and peace. Today, Lord, we will hear about your spirit of truth. It sounds like 
Everywhere we go, we are hearing about your spirit. So send your spirit to us now, and may we live in that spirit each and every day as we learn more and more to trust you, to honor everyone, and to reach out in service. And now let's remember that prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So find a hymn book. There's a hymn book there somewhere. You may have to reach over and to find one, but please, you'll need that. And open it to number 400. And let's stand and together sing, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. Thank you. Be seated. Well, this morning, I have the extreme pleasure of announcing our pastor today, the Reverend Nandria Sims. I am so pleased that she is joining us today, and I see some other folks that's come in. So welcome, and thank you for coming in. I see my friend Vera Thomas out there. Hey, Vera, so good to see you. Thank you for being with us and everyone else. So I give you Reverend Sims. Amen, amen. I'm so excited about being in the house of the Lord this morning. And if you're excited, come on and give yourselves another hand clap of praise. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. awesome. Um, before I read the scripture, I just want to recognize the members of Mount Pleasant that have came. If they could just raise their hands, because they've been at 9 o'clock service, and have a couple over here. We're so thankful to have you with us. 
Um, this morning, the scripture will be coming from John 16, the 12th through the 15th verse. And it reads, and I'm reading from the New King James Version. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. However, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will tell you things to come. He will glorify me, for he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore, I said that he will take care of mine and declare it to you. It is the word of God for the people of God. Amen. Thanks be to God. Amen. This morning, I'm going to talk from a subject of I'm thankful for the Holy Spirit. I'm thankful for the Holy Spirit. How many of you are thankful this morning? It might not be just to wake up early and get the crust out your eyes and make it to service this morning, but I don't know about you, but I'm thankful for having gas in my car. Are you thankful for that? Okay. I'm thankful for having gas in my car. Amen. So um, I find it hard to believe that every morning that we wake up that we have a hard time trying to decipher what are things that we should be thankful for. We just woke up this morning and we were able to come into the presence. We were able to commune together. We were able to sing together even on this morning. But on last Sunday, we just celebrated the Pentecost. And on this Sunday, the Trinity Sunday, is the first Sunday after the Pentecost to honor the Holy Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And also on Trinity Sunday, we proclaim the mystery of our faith in the triune God the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, one in three and three in one. Have you ever had a package deal like that? Sometimes it said it's not included in the, in the box or so, but we have a three in one special when it comes to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. On one day, a pigeon had became, begun nesting beneath my church's steeple, and I arrived one Sunday evening just as the bird took flight. A church elder was standing outside, and he casually said, I see the Holy Spirit has taken up residence with us. And as the elder watched the bird fly away, he said, yep. And as soon as you showed up, there he went. <laughs> the early church asked for the Spirit. They acknowledged his power, his way. Sensitive souls have always turned to the Spirit for help, but the Spirit does not add qualities of life we do not possess. Those qualities are something that are poured into us from the outside. They are inside humans and respond to the Spirit, developing every potential to the fullest. But John Milton once asked the, the Spirit to aid him as he began the epic poem, Paradise paradise lost but it would have been of little help had he not possessed the genius of a poet John Wesley declared that the success of his work was due to the spirit but we must remember that the Wesley was a born leader the spirit used him there was something in Wesley that responded to the spirit is there something in you that can respond to the spirit that God is speaking to you even on today John 16 the same infallible Holy Spirit who inspired the writings of the Old Testament which bears all the hallmarks of the verbal inspiration inspired the writing of the New Testament it talks about the Gospels but the Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, the, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to remembrance. And whatsoever I have said unto you, we have the book of Acts, what, when the Comforter come, whom I will send from the Holy Spirit. We have the epistles. I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. How be it when the Spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, then he shall speak. This verse, it, Jesus was encouraging his followers 
I'm not talking about your Instagram followers. I'm not talking about your social media followers. But he was encouraging his followers, the disciples. They did not fully understand why Jesus had to leave. Therefore, Jesus explained that if he didn't go away, the comforter wouldn't come. So if I stay here, the Holy Spirit can't come. We can't both coexist in the same thing. So I have to go in order for the Holy Spirit to come and comfort you. The emphasis was stress where, nevertheless, I tell you, Jesus stresses the fact that what he is teaching is divine truth. Of course, Jesus always spoke the truth. Have you ever known him to lie? Come on, somebody. Jesus is emphasizing the fact that God's plan for him was to go to Calvary's cross and die for the sins of mankind. In other words, that he would need to go away. Nevertheless, bears out the thought that Jesus knew that the grief and anxiety of his disciples as they thought of the returning to the Father and leaving them alone in a hostile, unfriendly world. In a hostile world unfriendly world would you be afraid if you knew that Jesus was leaving you and you've been walking and seeing all the miracles that he has done and all the people that he has raised from the dead all the 5,000 that he has fed and you mean to tell me you brought me all the way out here and you about to leave me nobody would be worried I guess I'm not worried I would be worried But he gave them consolation that the Holy Spirit would be with them Jesus leaving the disciples was a necessity it was God's plan that he would go to the cross and that he would be, that he would die for the sins, be buried, be resurrected on the third day and ascend back to heaven. This was the, this was the will of the sovereign God. If the disciples would grasp the truth, they would rejoice rather than grieve. If we knew the truth of God, we would rejoice rather than grieve. We wouldn't be sad all the time. Have you ever seen a sad Christian? Just sad moping around, got the head down, upset about everything that life has for them. But if we know the true God and we serve the true God, and if we know that we have a Holy Spirit that's our comforter, we have no reason to grieve the loss of Jesus. Come on, somebody. You can say amen. But if we're going to be thankful for the Holy Spirit on this morning, the first thing is the Holy Spirit has to guide us. Howbeit the truth, the spirit of truth is come. He will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, he shall speak, and he will show you the things to come. But the anointing which they had received abided in you. Ye need not any man to teach you, but the same anointing teaches all things. Now, the Holy Spirit is one who delivers the truth to the man. One of the works of the Spirit is inspiration. And for the prophecy came not in the old time of the will of man, but the holy men of God spake that they were moved by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit guided the individual human penmen of the Bible, enabling them, the people that wrote, the people that wrote in the Bible, he enabled them to receive and then record without error. Have you ever had somebody taking notes and they missed out a whole paragraph of what you said? So when they read off the minutes, I didn't say that. As a matter of fact, you missed like four or five sentences. But one thing about the Holy Spirit, it didn't allow them to write in error. They didn't miss a part. And we didn't have to call and tell them, hey, you need to go back and look at those minutes and review them because you messed them up. No, it wasn't anything like that. But the Holy Spirit was accurate. The human intellect is incapable of knowing and understanding the spiritual truth. Only God can understand his truth. Therefore, the Holy Spirit illuminates the mind of men, enabling them to grasp the spiritual truth. He gives us discernment, and we think it's our intuition. (laughs) Oh, I don't think I should do that. Oh, I probably shouldn't have said that that way. I really wanted to say something to him, but I didn't feel like it today. And we feel bad about it. It's not just our intuition. We're not trusting our intuition. We're trusting the discernment of the Holy Spirit. Come on, nobody's ever been mad in here, and you really wanted to say some unusual things to somebody, but he caught you right in the midst of you about to go and tell them off. It wasn't just your intuition of saying, I don't want to do No, it was the Holy Spirit, baby. Come on, somebody. 
It kept you from going out and acting out of character. But to illuminate, illuminate means to give light to something, meaning to make clear. Illumination is the work of the Holy Spirit where he gives the man the ability to understand the word of God. We have an omniscient God. The question is often asked today, does the Spirit, does the Holy Spirit guide you today? Does the Holy Spirit guide you today or are you guiding yourself? You're driving without a driver's license. You're driving before you know what a break in a gas is. It's kind of like that. We're guiding ourselves blindly, but we have to have the Holy Spirit to guide us in every avenue of your life. And if, if I, I'm, I'm originally from um, north central Mississippi, Montgomery County. You may know of Greenwood or Grenada area. I'm south of there, 20 miles, the intersection of 82 and 55. And I often get lost. <laughs> I know the country roads now. But I rely on my GPS a lot. And if you can drive without a GPS, you're a good driver if you're going to unfamiliar territories. The same way that we have our faith in our GPSs or our compasses if we're out in the woods, we have to have that same faith of the Holy Spirit to lead and guide us because sometimes we make a wrong turn. Have you ever rode with somebody and they want to admit when they made a wrong turn? Don't look down. I know it's you. You made a wrong turn and you won't tell them you're just going to keep driving and keep driving and keep driving. And then you're going to admit that you were lost. We do that same thing in our Christian life. We keep driving when we know we're going farther away from God. How deeply can we trust the Holy Spirit? The word God comes from hodagio, which is made up of two words, hojeoma, meaning to lead, and hodos, meaning the way. The Holy Spirit guides the believer along our pilgrim pathways. Webster says to lead or direct in a way or to conduct a course of path or to guide a traveler. He will guide us in all the truth, not our ideas or our opinion. Everybody has an opinion, but we don't live by our opinion. We live by the Holy Spirit guiding us and leading us. Not only does the Holy Spirit guide us, but secondly, it revives us. Can you say they say revives us? All things the Father hath are mine, therefore I shall take of mine that he shall show unto you. The Father has been interpreted by the Son, all that the Son would be interpreted by the Spirit. Jesus taught his disciples to think great thoughts about the Father. I don't know about you, but I'm so glad I'm among men and women that think of great thoughts all the time. Don't look down. That we think of good thoughts all the time and that, that we will be interpreted by the Spirit and, and teach us great thoughts about the Son. If anything calling itself a Christian teaching makes it an approach to us and does not exalt and glorify Christ, it's not the Holy Spirit. If it's teaching you to go against the Word of God, if it's teaching you not to love one another, if it's teaching you to abuse one another, it's certainly not the Holy Spirit that is leading and guiding you. What is guiding you even on today? Are you allowing the Holy Spirit? Are you thankful for the Holy Spirit? I'm thankful for the Holy Spirit that he came and saved a, a girl just like me from the west side, grew up on the south side, and God came and yanked me out of the middle of my mess. And for that, I'm thankful that he is still guiding me. I have not always, and I just dropped my mic, I have not always arrived. Let's get this one. Amen. Arrived to where I am today. I had some failures, I had some faults, I had some things that I didn't do right, I had some people that I didn't love right, I had some mistakes that I made that I had to repent and, and ask God to forgive me for, but if it wasn't for the Holy Spirit, yeah, we talk about Pentecost on last Sunday, but I'm talking about the Holy Spirit on Trinity Sunday, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. It's interesting that all three persons of the Trinity are mentioned in these two verses because he refers to the Holy Spirit he refers to Jesus and the Father refers to God. Can I say that again? He refers to the Holy Spirit. Me refers to Jesus and the Father refers to God. All three persons of the God held deal in truth. And the truth was ultimately revealed by God. Without God's revelation of his truth, we would not even know the truth. Revelation is God revealing to us what we would not know otherwise. The Son is the personification of all truth. When Jesus came to earth, he was the truth in the flesh. 
and to this end and for this cause came into the world, I should bear witness unto the truth. The Holy Spirit illuminates our minds and give us the light that we need to comprehend the divine truth. He will guide. The Holy Spirit will guide us and show us. There is no other divine book. There is no other divine novel. There's no other library checking out or any directory that you can read that can give you the, 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 the re revelation of what the Holy Spirit is in your life and how we are led, how we are driven, and how we are guided by the power of the Holy If you know about the Holy Spirit, somebody just say amen. Anything that contradicts the revealed truth of God is not the Spirit because God reveals and guides according to the truth. According to Lisa Belcher Hamilton, Fred Rogers in a television program, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. Y'all didn't grow up on Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood? I did. Oh, we had a, it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Okay, amen. He took courses on how to preach during his time in seminary, said Rogers. Years ago, my wife and I was worshiping in a little church with our friends of ours, and we were on a vacation, and in the middle of his homiletics course at that time, during the sermon, he kept ticking off every mistake that he thought his preacher made. <laughs> Do we ever get a manuscript? Oh, they didn't finish that complete thought. That was a clause. That was a run-on sentence. They missed the period at the end of that. They didn't even breathe ticked off every mistake that the preacher was making. He must have been 80 years old. When this interminable sermon finally ended, I turned to one of my friends intending to say something critical about the sermon, and I just took this off again. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move it. Amen. <laughs> so he turned to his neighbor after he got finished critiquing this pastor I turned to my friends and intended to say something critical about what he did wrong, how bad he messed up, what he could have done different. And he stopped when he saw tears running down his neighbor's face. She whispered to him, he said exactly what I needed to hear. That was really a seminal experience for him. He was judging and she was needing. Can I say that again? She was, he was judging and she was needing. How often do we take for granted the little small things that we're complaining about, the little bitty minute things that we find error in when somebody just needed to hear I love you. Somebody said that I just needed a hug. Oh, they hug too much. They talk too much. Well, maybe somebody hadn't had anybody to talk to them in a long time. Maybe they're lonely. Maybe they haven't had anybody to stop by the nursing home and see them in a little bit. And that little knock on the door, that little wave instead of being critical, they speak to everybody. We've never said that before. It was needed. And the Holy Spirit responded to the need and not the judgment. Although we must always give ministry our best effort, we must never forget that the Holy Spirit can work through even the most faulty instrument. I was just talking to um, the musician, and she was talking about how she played the, the trumpet, and I played the clarinet in band. We were talking about all these different musical instruments, and when we were in marching season, you couldn't, if it was cold, you had to blow warm air into your instrument in order for it to, come on somebody, in order for it to sound right, you wouldn't squeak, your instrument wouldn't sound out of tune, you had to blow fresh air in that. And I think about that. Sometimes we think our instruments are faulty. We're the instruments now, he's, he's the musician. We have these faulty instruments, but he blows fresh air into us, which is the Holy Spirit. And it keeps us from day today. So what are you thankful for on this Trinity Sunday? I'm thankful. I'm, I don't know about you, I'm thankful for the Holy Spirit. It is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Uh, 
uh, if you'll stand and join us for our closing song, Goodness of God. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, I will sing of the goodness of God. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire in darkest night. You are close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. I have lived in the goodness of God. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. Your goodness is running after, is running after me. Your goodness is running after, is running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, is running after me. been so, so good, with every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God, I will sing of the goodness of God. Well, we just need to give Denandria a big hand. I mean, thank you. What a beautiful sermon. I needed to hear that. I needed to hear about nitpicking. How many of you have nitpicked when you shouldn't have? I can raise my hand. I know that for sure. I'm sure my husband can tell you that. <laughs> and by the way, we've been married. We will be married 43 years on Wednesday, so something went and gone right. Thank you. I know Tom and Nancy's had an anniversary too. Tom and Nancy Holder, so happy anniversary to you two. How many years? 52 Whoa. years. Thank you. Wow. I hope I can make it that long. I'm sure we will. But again, thank you. What a beautiful blessing you've given us today. I know everyone wants to say hello to you. So why don't you just stand right after we do the benediction, just stand up here and they, everyone can say hello. So let me leave you with these, this benediction. It's my favorite. It's an old benediction, but it's so fitting for this Trinity Sunday. Go in peace. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
Amen. Have a wonderful week.